It's the best part of fun and festivities. Whether it's a birthday, wedding, New Year's celebration, 4th of July, or something else. What are we talking about? Fireworks. But have you ever wondered what makes this possible? How do they burn into so many colors and patterns? Fireworks may seem like pure magic, but they're actually pure science. Selecting the raw materials. No matter the type, fireworks are all about engineering the right chemicals in the right proportions so that the proper explosions are created. If not handled properly, they can cause severe injuries and even death. Modern fireworks consist of a shell made of plastic, paper mache, or heavy paper surrounding compartments separated by cardboard. As the base of the shell, there is a small compartment containing black powder that propels the firework into the sky. It's made from heavy cardboard, iron, aluminum, or plastic mortar. There is another large compartment that contains chunks of a mixture of chemicals. These chemicals produce light and color when heated to a specific temperature. These chunks are also known as stars. Now, there are two different types of stars in the modern firework. For the American and European, manufacturers will mix the stars with black powder inside a cylindrical compartment. This black powder explodes to ignite the stars so they can be scattered across the sky. The Asian fireworks work a little differently. Here, the stars surround the black powder in a spherical compartment, creating a more symmetrical display. Instead of stars and black powder, a compartment may also be filled with flash powder. This material produces a sudden bright light and a loud bang, making Independence Day even more festive. Lastly, fuses made of threads mixed with grains of gunpowder are attached to the various compartments in a firework to bring everything together. Now, let's break down each raw material that goes into fireworks. Black powder is an explosive substance made from a mixture of sulfur, potassium nitrate, and charcoal in a 75 to 15 to 10 ratio by weight. Why is the ratio so important? Well, considering how the black powder is supposed to ignite and set off the other components, special attention is paid to perfecting it. A mixture of potassium perchlorate, sulfur, potassium chlorate, and aluminum is used as the flash powder. Stars are made from a fuel that burns to provide heat, a coloring agent that gives off color when heated, and an oxidizer to burn the fuel in the first place. The manufacturer can choose different types of fuel. It can be of the slow burning variety, such as charcoal, dextrin, or red gum, that produces a dim, long lasting display, or they can opt for fast burning fuel instead, such as aluminum, magnesium, or titanium, that'll create a bright, short lasting display. Of course, the best part of fireworks is the dazzling colors that enthrall everyone. Coloring agents include aluminum, magnesium, titanium, carbon or iron, sodium compounds, and barium nitrate or barium chlorate are used to produce many colors. Lastly, oxidizers are used to burn the fuel. These highly reactive oxygen-containing compounds can vary from potassium perchlorate or ammonium perchlorate. Now that we're done choosing the raw materials, let's move on to manufacturing. Making the stars. First, the company prepares the stars from ingredients sourced from chemical supply companies and stored in barrels. When mixing, these chemicals are scooped out from the barrels, weighted, and sifted twice through brass screens to eliminate any unevenness or lumps. Brass is used because it won't produce any sparks. Next, the sifted powders will be placed on a large sheet of paper and then mixed by hand. A rotating drum or a stationary container with rotating paddles may also be used to mix the powders. However, great care must be exercised to avoid producing heat through friction or trapping powder bits between the machinery's moving parts. That would be a recipe for disaster indeed. Moving on, the mixed powder will be placed in barrels and taken to the cutting room. Water will be mixed with the dry mixture to form a soft dough. These lumps of dough will be scooped into large paper-lined wooden molds shaped like loaves of bread. A wooden mallet is used to pack the dough firmly into the mold. It must be noted that it's much safer to work with wet dough than dry powder. Next, the massive loaves of dough are unmolded onto a workbench. These benches are covered with heavy cardboard sprinkled with black powder. 
Now, the dough will be cut in one direction to form slices, and then cut in the other direction to form dice. Since the dough is wet, the black powder will adhere to the dice and help them burn once the firework is ignited. Paper-covered screens are used to dry the dice for the next step. Making the breaks. The dried dice are now the stars, which will be moved to the packing room and placed into cardboard containers. A hollow cardboard tube is placed in the center of the cylindrical container and the stars will be carefully poured around it. Once the container is packed to the brim with stars, black powder is poured inside the hollow tube, which is then removed from the container. The powder will fill up the spaces between the stars, causing them to ignite and scatter later. Next, a paper cap will be placed on the container, which is now called a break. A heavy string is wrapped around the break in a process known as spiking. The string is cut and tied when the break is completely covered with it. Now it's time to insert a short, slow burning fuse known as the time fuse into the break, and then it is wrapped in heavy paper. The fuse will cause the break to explode when it is launched. Afterwards, the wrap breaks are transferred to the pasting room to cover them in heavy paste soaked paper. Then it's allowed to dry for about approximately two days. When the paper hardens as the paste dries, it forms a strong, tight seal. Interestingly, some breaks are filled with flash powder rather than stars and black powder. These are known as salutes. Flash powder is mixed in the same way as the chemicals used to make stars. Once the mixture is formed, it's poured into thicker cardboard containers than your regular breaks. This causes excessive pressure to build up before the salute bursts resulting in much louder booms. These salutes are also spiked and pasted, just like the other breaks. Now, it's time to make the shells and assemble all the parts. Making the shells. The dried breaks are taken to the finishing room so they can be assembled into shells. A simple shell consists of a small compartment of black powder, which is combined with a single break. Asian shells always contain only one break due to their spherical structure. On the other hand, American and European shells are cylindrical, so more than one break can be stacked together. This allows the shell to display multiple bursts of different colors at once when it explodes. Multi-break shells consist of a black powder compartment combined with three or four colored breaks and a salute. In fact, large shells may contain as many as 10 breaks. Fun fact, one gigantic shell was even made with 22 breaks. Pretty incredible, right? The shell is assembled by stacking all the various components together, attaching a long, fast-burning fuse known as the starting fuse, and then finally wrapping the entire thing in heavy paper. The assembled package is tied together with string. Once completed, the firework is then labeled and stored. Launching the fireworks. The last step is to launch the fireworks, and the launching step is carried out by the same companies that make them. The design to be formed is sketched on graph paper and sent to the carpenters if a set piece is to be used. They'll meticulously build a wooden frame with thin wooden slats in the shape of the design. Moreover, if the company chooses to use music to accompany the fireworks, the timing of the firework display will be planned to match the tempo of the music accurately. In order to start the launch, mortars to launch the shells will be placed in their proper places. Holes are dug in the ground or in steel drums filled with sand for the large shells, while the smaller mortars are placed in wooden racks. Next, the proper shell is loaded in place for each mortar. The crew will then assemble the wooden frames for the set pieces and attach lances to the slats while the fuses are connected to the lances. The lances and mortars are lit at the proper times when the display is initiated, either with long handheld flares or with electrical wires attached to a central switchboard. It is crucial to destroy any unexploded duds after the show safely. Click on one of the two videos on your screen right now, and we'll catch you guys in the next one.